Hello and welcome. This is Wilker, and today I am doing a spotlight on Multi MC5. Uh, I have not done a lot of non mod specific spotlights, but I hope you guys enjoy this very, very cool program from Dre Shark and Fork and some others. Um, I just wanted to really quickly get into what Multi MC is and some of its features, and then I'll show you how it works a little bit. Uh, basically, Multi MC is an instance manager for Minecraft. And an instance is a complete installation of Minecraft. What that means is you have a, a folder called an instance folder. And within that is a complete Minecraft jar, a complete list of uh, mod files, config files, all the things you would normally have hidden away in your individual installation of Minecraft and all managed completely by you, the user. Multi-MC is very powerful and uh, very simple which is a great combination and a big reason why I've used it for a really long time. So uh, first of all, just a quick tutorial. Uh, you'll notice here, this is basically the first thing that you'll see when you fire up MultiMC 5, which by the way is a brand new version incorporating lots of neat new features and toys and bells and whistles. Um, the first thing you'll see is that there's a lot of things that are grayed out. So let's get set up. Um, we're going to have to give it our account information, and this is going to allow it to connect to the Minecraft servers and download all the files that you need. So let's give it my account. We're going to add one. Let's see here. Wilker. Password is I love butts. And now I have an account, and it's set to default, and uh, I can close it. Now you notice up here I have my account. And uh, let's say you have multiple accounts on here. You could definitely set them up that way. That way your skins and everything were all set up right. The next thing we need to do is make our very first instance. I'm going to do that right here with add new instance. This is one of the first uh, features that you'll run into for MultiMC, and it's very, very neat. Let's name this one, uh, I don't know, uh, vanilla. Let's say I just wanted to have a good old vanilla install of Minecraft. Now, before I click OK, you'll notice there's a version box. I can select versions up from the current snapshot all the way back into... Uh, the land of your back here, way back to 132 to 11. I don't know how old that is. That's ridiculously old. Uh, pre infinite worlds, maybe? I don't remember. But look, there's alpha builds in there and beta builds and all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, so uh, for this one, we're going to go ahead and build a 1.7.9 instance. We're going to hit OK. And we're going to hit OK again. And here it is. Uh, now, normally, um, as soon as you make an instance, MultiMC is going to download any missing libraries. It'll download the appropriate version of LWJGL, so you have the right back end, all kinds of great stuff. Um, and now, once I click on this instance, you'll notice this stuff over here on the right kind of lights up. Before I get into that, we're going to go through some of the other features up here on the menu bar. There is a copy instance. You can also directly open the instance folder, and that's where you'd see all the files and stuff for uh, that particular instance. You can um, open a central mods folder, and the central mods folder is not something you have to use, but it gives you a place where you can download mods and keep them all in there so that you have a, an easy place to point MultiMC at to add mods to your instances, which we'll get into here in just a little bit. Um, this will refresh your instance list. This is uh, mostly useful for if you've gone and manually deleted or copied instances over from somewhere else. Uh, and then of course you can um, uh, check for updates. I'm on the current version. Uh, you can get into your multi-MC settings. Now this is an important thing that um, I wanna make a differentiation for you. And we'll come back to it here. It's the next thing I'm gonna go over. There is a bug reporter, there is an about, and there is a cat with some string. Isn't he cute? Okay, so settings. And settings are important because settings for MultiMC uh, are going to impact the whole program and all of your instances unless you tell it something different. You can change uh, what update channel you're on if you want to be on uh, development versions of MultiMC. Um, I don't think that there'll be too many more release candidates, but I don't know. I'm just a YouTube guy. Um, you can have it track, track FTB instances for you, you know, if you wanted to. And you can also rename and uh, point at different folders for where you want your instances stored, where you want mods stored, different LWJGL versions, and uh, icons. 
Um, next over here, you've got a, a language setting. You can have it reset your notifications. And then uh, if you use an external uh, JSON editor, you can use that too. Uh, for Minecraft, here are some important things. If you wanted to have all of your instances have a uh, specific set uh, resolution, for example, if you were recording in 720, oops, and you wanted to have all of your instances default to that, you could. You can turn on and off the console, things like that. You can pass uh, Java memory settings, specific Java arguments. You can use different Java paths, um, pre and post launch commands, all kinds of great stuff. Um, and you can also do this per instance, which I'm going to show you in a second. Finally, you can use things like uh, proxies. And if you want to use external tools for profiling or Visual VM or MC Edit, you can do all that here too. Now, uh, after you've set kind of your global settings, you can also set settings over here with your individual instance. And this would let you override resolution. See, there's my defaults, but I could change them if I wanted to. I could maximize it. I could make it um, an 800 by 600 window, whatever I wanted to do. Okay, oops, maybe. Well, maybe 800 is too small. Anyway, um, you can also pass individual different memory arguments. Like let's say you've got a pack that uses just a ton of perm gen, so you needed to just bump this up. You could do it right there. It's so easy. You could also specifically pass different uh, Java settings to an instance, you can um, have it, you know, garbage collect differently, whatever you want to do. Again, very simple, but very powerful because you can do anything you would have to normally do with like a batch file or something to get your Minecraft running the right way for that instance, all right here inside the interface. Okay, so uh, a couple other things I want to show you over here on the instance menu. Um, there is a place to change the name. You can play, launch it directly. You can launch it in offline mode for when the Minecraft servers are down, which never happens. By the way, down here in your user interface, you've got a, uh, uh, a place to show you what the status of the Minecraft servers are. If the auth server's up, if the account servers are up, if the skin servers are up, all kinds of good stuff. Um, you can put notes on here, like if you wanted to... Uh, Remind yourself of the um, the problems with the update cycle. You could write, I love weekly version updates. Thanks, Mojang. Things like that. Um, you can uh, also assign your instance to a group, which is a very cool feature. Um, we'll talk about that here in a minute. You can directly access the screenshot folder. You can, uh, as we talked about, change the settings. Now you can change the version of your instance too. You'll notice that this doesn't go back as far and that's because there is a difference in how Minecraft worked prior to 1.6 as far as um, how it ran and how it uh, does account stuff. So if you want to have something older than that, you have to make the instance from scratch. If not, you can flip this install around between different versions. Um, Probably the most important thing that most of you will end up doing with your individual instances is the edit mods button. This is going to pop up a window where it's going to allow you to install a version of Forge. Um, notice no Forge versions available for 179. We'll get into that here in just a minute. Um, you can also install Light Loader. You can install different mods for whatever uh, Forge version you currently have installed. And you can do resource packs. So all really nice, again, all really simple, all right in front of you. If you want, you can open up the instance folder directly so that you can edit the files in it. Same thing with the config folder, you can access it directly. And of course you can delete the instance. Um, so that's kind of your basic uh, look at how multi-MC works. Um, I have another one of these set up and running. Let's see here, is this it? Yes. Um, and this is gonna show you a couple other features, um, specifically the groups. So you'll notice here I've got an instance, okay, and it is set up for um, 1.4.6. And uh, when I installed it, it automatically downloaded the correct Minecraft jar and all the correct libraries and everything else to go with it to have a 1.4.6 install. Um, I've also got a 1.5.2. And what I've done is I've put these into groups by using the change group button. And you can make your group name whatever you want. I can make a group named... Why do I play this game? 
And there it is. It'll move your instance right into it. Um, I've always loved to organize my instances by version number, but there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can do it by pack or by age or by server. Um, you could have yourself a Pixelmon group if you wanted to, and then each instance could be a different server that used, I don't know, a different group of mods. Um, so as you can see, it automatically sorts it and organizes for you, makes it all really, really easy to see kind of what's going on. Um, let's look at Wilker World. So this is an instance that I would use to connect to my Let's Play server. And you'll notice this time when I click on Edit Mods, it shows um, my uh, correct version of Minecraft, okay, along with... Uh, a list of mods that I have installed. So here's all the mods that I use um, to connect to that server. Now what it doesn't have in here is Forge. So let's get that added. We're going to click on Install Forge. And now here's a list of all the Forge versions for 164. So let's click 965. Notice here it's going to download it. It's going to get all the libraries from Forge put together. I think there's currently a bug with um, some versions of Forge uh, since they moved their uh, resource location, but that should be fixed by the time you guys see this. Um, and now I can, uh, um, via my loader mods or resource packs, just really simply um, find, let's see, here's all my downloads for 1.6.4 mods. And I could click on any of these and add them and it would uh, automatically copy the files in the right place. It would make sure that if uh, there was a config file for that mod, that after it generated it, it was assigned to the right instance. Um, all very, 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 very behind the scenes and easy to use. Uh, you'll notice there's a couple last things here that I didn't get into. Um, there is a refresh status of all the uh, web servers. There is a link to take you to the MMC development blog. There is a Patron uh, link here, which I, of course, would highly encourage anyone that uses a product to try to support the authors. But, uh, you know, if you don't want to, that's okay, too. Uh, and finally, whenever you click on an instance down here in the bottom left, it'll just tell you uh, what particular um, type of instance it's set up to be, uh, along with versions. Um, that, guys, is a general overview of Multi-MC5. Hope you guys have enjoyed seeing it. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the video comments. I will, of course, leave a link to where you can obtain this uh, fantastic program along with um, uh, a list of credits for the developers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I enjoyed making this video. Thanks to the Multi-MC team again for a product that I really, really love using. And hopefully we'll see you guys next time.